didn't expect such a surprise on the third day of the race. This morning, the chosen one is Armel Leclerc, and that's not what last night's surveys predicted for the favorite Alex Thompson, who's now in eighth position. What paid off best last night was option west, and Paul Meya in a second position at the crack of dawn makes out quite well, pursued from the west by Jérémy Bayou, Vincent Rioux, Sébastien Joss, and by Jean-Pierre Dic, more on the middle route. It's a great pace, and it's great to have boats all around. I haven't realized yet, haven't had time to sit back and understand that the Vendée Globe is on. But now we're at full speed, maneuvers in every direction. I succeeded shifting to the west. I wanted to shift westwards, and it worked. Because I found myself, well, I caught up with the bunch Chitana and PRB. The quiz of the day is, well, after the Azores High, another justice of the peace will have to be dealt with. The Madeira Archipelago, famous for disrupting winds. Is it best to pass it on the inside or on the outside? <laughs> there's necessarily an island. When at sea, there's bound to be an island that's going to bother some competitors. So let's see, once the ridge is passed, there'll be another obstacle to cross. Otherwise, this Vendée Globe is also some nice, unusual encounters. Such rainbows you don't run into very often. It's great, isn't it? Either you do the Vendée Globe, as we do. Either you play Robinson Crusoe. I have no idea where he's heading, but he doesn't look in a hurry. I'm surprised to see you so close to Portugal. In any case, I hope our encounter will bring you luck and that you'll have wind, proper winds, so not to get stuck. That's the worst, I think. Yes, that's nice, very nice. It was cool. See you soon. Solitaries should pick up speed in the next two days, taking advantage of a favorable eastern trade wind. That's crosswind, less spread for the foilers.